Hello, everybody. I am almost done with my horse that I've been drawing. Um, I have a bit more of the mane to do up in here. So I was just going to draw that now. I like to use my mechanical pencil for hair. And for the mane, it's different than the fur part of the horse. I would really consider it to be hair. When I drew the horse, I drew some of the main, ha ha ha, important movements of the hair. So like where it's curving like this and where there's, you know, maybe one particular hair coming down. I had those in there, but what I'm dealing with is the hair that goes right along up here and it looks almost like you know human long hair and so I draw some of those in the lights and the darks and then take either you know an end um, an end eraser that you put on the end of your pencil that's either new or I've cut this one to get a little corner and what I do is kind of erase and draw Erase and draw back and forth. So in the beginning, it seems kind of counterproductive because I want to get this done and I am erasing away everything that I do, sort of. Now up here, it's lighter. So I'm doing a little more erasing to the top. Remember my erasing is actually the hair because the hair is light. And my pencil strokes are probably the bits in between. Now, if this is too sharp of a pencil, I can take a, you know, like this is a school pencil. It's a little more soft or even something way softer, 2B, 3B. I'm not ready to go too much darker than that, but down here on the neck where I need to get kind of a, a pattern of the shadows. I may want to do that. This is called a tortillion, those little rolled paper sticks. And you can use those almost to draw with, smudge with. If you're just smudging, you could really use just a Q-tip. If you want to get a really clean line and use this, I'm using it to kind of make the pattern of the, the shadows on the neck here. Um, I can use that little tortillion to, um, to draw that with. And then I want to go back in. And don't you just love the glare of graphite? Makes everything a little more tricky. So now that I've done that a few times and I've erased away and I've drawn in and I've erased away and I've smudged, it's starting to look more and more like the actual hair and the shadows of the hair of the mane. So now I can pick out and be even more um, picky and detailed because I know with my softer pencil, like these were shadow areas that I needed to put in. And then keeping that clean and with my mechanical pencil, putting in some of the between the hair close lines that are happening. So I'm going to do that a bit more. You know, sometimes in the shadow area, there's a hair. Okay. 
some are going all the way up to the top. Don't want to miss those. Some of them have a, a little broader shadow area. I can put those in with a little smudge too. Take out in between. This takes out just enough. You can use this when you're drawing human hair too. This method of going back and forth in between strokes. Sometimes they're just a little more shadowy because they're kind of sitting in that little, you know, this is a ridge up along the top where the mane comes out of, and then this little curve where the muscles of the neck start to come out that the hairs are sitting on before they flow down the neck. Or here they kind of go back and then they flow down. Always got to consider what's underneath what you're drawing. And don't be too quick. You know, this will look better the longer and longer I spend on it. So even when I get this top part done up here and all the hairs that are happening up there, Got a little more ways to go before I'm bringing it out of the glare a little bit. Got a little more ways to go. Uh, now up here, we've got some hairs that go up and they're going around the other way. They're probably hanging down the other side of the horse's neck. And I just have one or two or three here. So I can use my eraser here to go into the background a little bit and give myself a few of these lighter ones or show where the, the curve is coming from the other side. You know, I could study all day and try and make, sorry, I'm going to take that light off that a little bit. I could study all day and make it exactly the same as the one in the picture. I'm getting the main shapes of it, but they're going to be some that aren't sitting in exactly the same place. But as long as it follows the form of the horse, you know, these curves that I talked about, that I'm getting. Now, where they're sitting away from the neck, I think I showed you this before, but where they are touching, the hair is touching the neck, the shadow will run right alongside it. But where it's not and it's sitting away from it, the shadow will go away from the hair. So some of these, the shadows right next to the hair and some it's a little farther apart. Um, the hair's hanging out and the shadow goes there and the hair goes there. I'll do the hair with an eraser mark. The hair's there and the eraser's, the, the shadow's there. So here's my hair, here's my shadow. So I can tell that it's hanging away from the skin and, and curling out. It's hanging away from the horse's body and curling out. Or sometimes they come back and they end up touching again. Then you make the hair and the shadow meet. But sometimes that shadow is sitting on the horse's body and the hair is away from it. I've got some that are going this way underneath. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the underneath hairs that are going this direction, back and forth between, and get them to sort of where I want them to be. And then I'm going to do the one or two that are over top and get them to where I want to be. Since they're over top, see, they're going to erase over top of those other ones. So I've got that feeling of underneath and over top. Still confusing, but now that I've created these shapes, I could go back in and shadow in between some of the shapes that I've made. And I'll start to make sense to the person looking at the picture. Oh, this hair is over, this hair is under, or at least it won't confuse them and distract them. Because all along up in here is, is that ridge I was talking about. Just use your use your your eraser like that tool it was meant to be. Removing is as important as putting down sometimes. Now I'm not completely done, but sorry, I keep moving this the wrong way. I'm not completely done, but I've got a lot more of that hair placed in there. And I just want to keep going along cleaning up the shadows versus the long hair pieces. And when they make shapes, go with it. Okay, that'll be a shadow area. And this will be a movement that goes with the shape of the horse's muscle and their neck. I'm getting there. I'm very close, very close to being done. Everything else is done up here. I can put a few more darks and lights in here to get this cleaned up. I'm going to have a few more darks in here that match up with these hairs. And very soon it'll be completely done. So keep on working on your horse hair, perfecting it, making it better. Every time I look at it, I see something else I want to draw drawing, erasing, finding the spaces that appear in between and going with it and making it look like the horse. Enjoy your horse picture. We'll be done soon.